Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Have you ever heard the song, I Can Only Imagine? If not, it's worth your time to look it up and listen to it. What do you think your response will be when you stand before the Lord and see Him in all His glory and majesty? Some people have told me of different questions they plan to ask when they get to heaven. Beloved, I absolutely guarantee you will not be asking any questions. Any concerns you had here on earth will be completely swept away when you see the Lord face to face. Isaiah didn't have to imagine what he would do. He did see the Lord, and he was overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by his glory and majesty. Overwhelmed by what was going on around the throne. But most of all, he was overwhelmed by his own sin. Instead of joining the seraphim crying, Holy, 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 Isaiah couldn't help but realize he wasn't worthy to be in the presence of the Lord's holiness. He cried, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I imagine that might be our first thought as well. But for those of us who have put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that's why he came to die for us. So through the price that he paid, our sins could be forgiven. So we could be in his presence and live with him forever. But this hadn't happened yet. So in order for Isaiah to be able to converse with him, the Lord made a special provision for Isaiah. A seraphim took a live coal from the altar, touched his mouth, and pronounced him clean. Then Isaiah heard what he'd been brought to hear. The Lord asked a question. Whom shall I send, and who shall go for us? Now God didn't give any details. He doesn't say where he's planning to send this person, when this might be, or what he's sending to do or anything. Just that he wants to send someone to represent him. I imagine Isaiah, like a first grader who doesn't really know the answer but wants to be called on anyway, raising his hand, jumping up and down, saying, Me! Me! Pick me! I'm right here! Well, maybe he wasn't quite that dramatic, but he was definitely that willing. God wanted to communicate with his creation, and Isaiah willingly volunteered, without counting the cost or knowing anything about the assignment. No matter what it was, it would be an honor and a privilege for him to serve the God of the universe. He wasn't trying to buy forgiveness or work until his good outweighed his bad. He'd already been forgiven. He just passionately loved his God and wanted to serve him. What is our motivation in serving God? Is it out of a sense of duty? Well, there's no one else that's going to do it. I guess it's up to me if it's going to get done. Or is it because other people expect it of us? If I don't do this, I'll look bad. Or is it because we're trying to get in good with God? If I do this, maybe he'll bless me. There's a plethora of different motivations for serving God and different attitudes in which we can serve him, begrudgingly because we have to, or even with a superior, you're lucky to have me type of attitude. But if we're going to do things with the wrong motivation or the wrong attitude, God would prefer that we didn't do them at all. He told the Israelites he hated their sacrifices and feast days and such. He wants us to serve him willingly and wholeheartedly, with no conditions or stipulations, just like Isaiah did. How do you serve the Lord? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.